This video will explain why Kandria are neither the victims nor the good guys in the world of Genshin Impact. I will also connect hints that Hoyovers dropped since Surumi Island to explain what might have happened 500 years ago inside the chasm and why the next cataclysm might be coming soon. Even before Inconomia came out, I started doubting things we had established about Kandria and made a theory about the chess game that is actually a war between two sides of the same coin. Fast forward 4 months and I made a theory that the chasm is an outpost made by Kandrians to launch attacks on Teve. Sure, some points I made are vastly outdated by now, but the core point is still there. So I decided to revisit this topic with a different perspective and more information from the new Archon slash event quest. You have heard that 500 years ago, Ryan daughter Wen Matt became gold and sent a bunch of mutated monsters all over Tevat. As a retaliation, the Archons fought back, and the sustainer cursed everyone who lived there to immortal life, treating everyone as equals. Right? For the most part, that is what happened. But when you hear things like how the first Hedwig Harbinger, Piero, tried to gain more favor of the King of Kandria to convey that messing with Tevat was a mistake, but only to be cast aside as a fool because he was less ranked than the sages of Kandria, you feel like, oh shit, these guys are a bunch of land-hungry morons. Then you start to realize, was it all simply goals doing, or was she just a piece in a bigger puzzle? When we found the fantastic compass, we got a little bit of backstory about it and something fascinating. Yelan's ancestors, Boyang and his brother, were given the fantastic compass by an unnamed person. <coughs> with great importance hundreds of years ago. Then the question arises, why did they bring that to the chasm? That's when Yanfei told the story of an adapter making friends with a human and how he created the compass and gave it to that human as a catalyst to seal monsters. This is not Alice since she is not human as in this story. Surprisingly, this event happened thousand years ago, a solid 500 years before the cataclysm we know. We have to wander then. Who was the adapter that made this catalyst and gave it to the human? Knowing that in 500 years, Kandria is going to attack Teva with Dark Beast. Whoever this person was, they could either see into the future as one of advanced adapter powers which Morax might have used in his right of dissension to prophesy trade, or have had a similar experience during their time. So to prepare Liwe for the inevitable future, they planned ahead. If this second conclusion is what happened, that makes my theory on an event like the Cataclysm happening every 500 years correct. That's a solid theory and all, but people still need more confirmation. From the surface, it looks like Genshin takes a lot of inspiration from the Gnostic myths. But there are a lot of parallels with other mythologies. Things related to Genshin world, especially Kandria, have a lot of parallels with Norse mythology. The Genesis Pearl, or the egg that the Primordial One brought to recreate the world, seems to be surrounded by a serpent, like Jormungandr from Norse mythology surrounds the entire earth. And the Irumensul tree, which the world is standing on top, makes the world tree, Yggdrasil, which the Kandrians worship and use its powers. Dinsleaf is called Bowkeeper, making him the guardian of the main branch of this tree. Considering that the Abyss Twin said that he failed to do his job in Kandria, he must be the guardian of the tree branch in Kandria. And the Abyss Majors drop branches of this tree. They use that branch to flow elemental power through it. Also, the materials the Shadow Husks drop, the gloomy, dark, and deadly statuettes all have one eye carved on the face, which awfully looks like the All Father Odin. Other than that, Durin and Divalan are dwarves in Norse mythology, and a dwarf named Fnafnir was cursed to be a dragon because of his greed for gold. All these Norse references, and there is something that follows all Norse mythologies. Ragnarok The Reset of the Norse World There are two wolves, Skull and Hardy, chasing the sun and moon. They represent day and night cycle until the day of Ragnarok, where they finally catch and devour the sun and moon. Surprisingly, the Rift Wolves come in two variants, warning that Kandria's army is coming soon. And the last chapter before Kandria is Nezinaya, the region of ice and snow. Referenced by the Fimble Winter, the great winter that continues for three years straight immediately before Ragnarok. What makes Ragnarok is the world-ending fight between Thor and Loki, referenced by the two twins probably fighting in the future. Then Surtur comes in with fire putting an end to the world, referenced by the sustain of heavenly principles ending a civilization. This dialogue from Yelan in the quest stuck with me. 
Within Yin and Yang, among the five regions, water, fire, wind, and thunder cycle like the seasons. Grasp the seven heavens from the ground. Open wide the three gates. All the worlds within reach. These lines, Yelan decoded from the Fantastic Compass, suggest Ying and Yang represent the two sides of the same coin, David and Kondria, or the world of Genshin as a whole. We were always told that there are seven regions in David. So where are those five regions they talk about here? Considering the next phrase says about the seven regions, which generally means David, the five regions must be the regions under Kondria, which are also represented by the five upside down crowns in domains. I go way in depth about why these are upside down in this video. But to give you a summary, since Kondria is under Tevat upside down due to gravity, the magic used by Kondria also only works when things are upside down in Tevat. The four seasons don't sound like the typical seasons we know, but in tropical countries, there are no winters, making a different kind of four seasons that are not standard for every country. The rainy season, when rain falls out of nowhere all day, the sunny season, when dams dry up and even give droughts, the windy season is when children send a ton of kites, and the thunderstorm season. Yes, the rainy season and the thunder season are different. There are two rainy seasons, and one has more thunderstorms. After that, the compass says that they will grasp the seven heavens, which to my understanding means they will capture Tevat. Since they are ruled by gods, the seven regions in Tevat are considered heavens in some places, and since the region is on the opposite side of the world, they should go through the earth between. Then it says about how they should open wide three gates. It may be the abyss corridors like the spiral abyss. In a sense, the jasm is also one of them since what we saw on our way back to the top might just be enough to convince at least that much. Third one might be the one young child fell into. Another possibility that a few people from Island X's Discord showed is that the three gates might be the gateways between three realms. The human realm, the light realm and the abyss void realm. So if they manage to open these doorways, the world could be unified under the rule of Kondria. But the secret person's note inside the compass says that the dark beasts were weakened inside that underground area, the same place they probably came out of. In the previous Archon quest with Dane's Leaf, the fountain inside the upside down place made the Hillichers and the other cursed people from Kondria feel comforting. Because it says that the dark beast from Kandria is getting weakened by this area, the comforting feeling they felt there was not about easing the pain, but a numbing sensation to forget the pain, like a drug that makes them feel high and kills them eventually. Hence the reason why Hilichnos come there to die. In the north, they say all the beasts from Kandria eventually died, but once we try to leave the chaotic space, the beasts still attacked us, meaning they kept coming and lingering inside the seal space after Bosius and Boyang died. Dainsleaf said the upside down building was created long before the cataclysm. Even though there is no exact time frame to when it was built, we can assume if the adapters gave the human the compass a millennia ago, it might also be a creation taken up and modified by the adapters to their own advantage back then. Like how the Taishan mentioned was once used by the adapti for the trial of earth. You have heard that these domains were made and used as altars, laboratories and rally points by the Kondrians. At some point in time, the people of Kondria had to leave them behind and retreat. So they were abandoned. Later, they were repurposed as things that benefited the people of Tevat. In the first Liu Archon quest, we heard that Guizhong and Cloud Retainer loved tinkering with technology from Kondria. So it's possible that these adapters found the fantastic compass in one of these domains and repurposed it to be used as a seal. In any case, the writings on the compass seems to be written by a Kondrian. The writer talks from the perspective of grasping the seven nations. And the nail from Celestia is what weakened the seal made from the compass. Yelan and Traveller talked about this briefly. Since the nail had the same effect on the seal as the ruined serpent from Kondria, it makes the compass also a device that uses the magic from Kondria. Way back, when we went around collecting books with Lisa, one special book was stolen by an abyss mage. The book named The Pale Princess and the Six Pygmies. It contained the story before this era when light and dark ruled the world. And in Enconomia, just before everyone left to the surface, 
Someone from Kandrel tried stealing the book before the sun and moon. Then during our visit to Enconomia, Enjo was sent there to find the same book again. Yet another book that contains a story from an era before the Archons. Things are repeating themselves. Things that happened many years ago are keep happening again differently since we started the game. Abyss, the current people of Kandrel, tried stealing books about previous eras. Rift hounds that come as advance guard for the Dark Beast army of Kandrel keep appearing in Tevat. First it was during Razor's quest in Wolvindom. The wolves that injured the native wolves of Wolvindom were these rift hounds. Second was on Surumi Island. In the references I showed you earlier to Ragnarok and the dark beast conjuring up in the chasm under the sealed area. Trust me guys, as things are going now, it's not going to end well. But Celestia might still have the upper hand in terms of power as Piero tried to warn the king of Kandria back then. So too did I fail to stop them from tearing away the veil of sin, unsuring in a tide of divine wrath, destruction and foolishness. Even the serpent knights fear the nail from Celestia. Do not enter outlanders. Do not disturb the sleeping stone from heavens. The heavens judgment, the needle of retribution. Never forget. They sound like many of these nails are still in Kandria's sky. Even the ominous thing that came down from the heavens shall be ours. But my theory senses are telling me that the current abyss is preparing for something bigger, something that will guarantee their win. The end is nigh. Until the abyss has engulfed the thrones, my war with destiny will see no end. This journey will reach its end. But I know that no side will win because that's usually how stories like this go. And things like twins union has to be met. The ending will be different this time since why bother telling a story now if something is not going to change from what is destined to happen. Unless Hoyovers tries to pull an original and kill one of the twins. But this is a piece of my madness. Things have been a lot busy these days with a lot of things happening around me recently. But hope you guys enjoy the new Archon quest as much as I did and hopefully by the time this video comes out things will be settled down and I can go back to the usual schedule. If you enjoyed the video, smash that like button. Join the madness by hitting that subscribe button. If you like this video, check out these cool videos. As always, remember, this is just a theory in a random dude's head on the internet. Thanks for watching and until next time, let your imaginations run wild.